for Digital Digest. I'm Will. Well, welcome to the library at Historic Fort Wayne, where the Historic Fort Wayne Coalition has given us permission to shoot again. We travel as much as we can to bring a wide range of stories that encompass the American Civil War to you, and we say thanks to the patrons, the CWDD Coffee Grinders on Patreon. Their financial support makes the travel and the equipment possible to do this for you. Today, let's talk about something that doesn't cost. Let's talk about something that's free. Historian Andrew Roscoe is with us. Now, historians have always professionally had a leg up on us. They've had access to a lot of things, and you're telling me the Internet's going to help level that playing field a little bit. Absolutely, Well, It's a pleasure to be back. The Internet has made so many resources available that you know, professional historians, they have research assistants, they have budgets in order to travel and go to archives. But now there are so many resources that have been in these archives that are starting to get digitized and put online, which means that people like you and I and reenactors and um, people who don't have those kind of resources can now get to them. And that's going to make for, that makes for a richer historical experience for all of us. Great. Well, let's talk about three ways we can use the internet for research. So there's three great resources I wanted to talk about today. First of all, I want to talk about the official records of the War of the Rebellion, the official army records. Uh, ways to get to those online. I wanted to talk about a website called archive.org, which is an incredibly wide-reaching re resource of historical documents. And finally, the Library of Congress Picture Archive. Okay, well, pictures sound like the most fun, so <laughs> let's save that for last. And if you want to hear about the photos, hang out here. We'll get to them in a minute. But let's start right behind me. This is from the ceiling to the floor is the official records of the War of the Rebellion when they reproduced them in the 1980s. The reproduction set was 138 volumes and cost about $2,500. These are almost artifacts, Andy. So these are an original set, and these started coming out in the 1880s through the 1890s, and they were produced by the federal government. The, uh, so they, in their own rights, are antique books, but the reproduction ones, now to get either a new set or to buy a used one, you're talking at least three, dollars $4,000. And that's something that's just going to make it financially unable for the average collector to be able to go purchase. Okay, so what do I want? How does the internet help me? So there are two great websites that are two great places that have gone and digitized these. Cornell University has digitized them in PDF format, which has some particular advantages. And then Ohio State University has digitized them in text format, which has some other uses. Okay, so Andy, you as a historian do this regularly. Give me a flowchart, give me a hack of how to best use these two sites together. Absolutely. So first go to the Cornell University website, go through the index, find what volumes you're looking for. And they're based on theater of the war and time period. And they're broken down by either reports, which are your after action reports from battle, or correspondence, which are either letters back and forth from commanders, published orders, and things of that nature. You find what you're looking for on there. You start searching through that volume. You start building the pages that you want. And then from there, you go over to the Ohio State University website, find that same volume part and then using the same page numbers, pull the text version of it, and use copy and paste into Word. Part of the problem with the Ohio State University one is it is in text format. It's about 95% accurate. There are some words that did not make the jump from PDF to text correctly. Most of the time you can figure out what they mean and you can make the correction, or you can just go reference back to the original PDF format and make sure you got it correct. So, Andy, let's move on. Of course, the official records, that's a great hack in helping us figure out how to not only access but work with. Let's talk. You said archive.org. Tell me more there. So archive.org is a website that has tens of thousands of historic documents uploaded to them. Particularly for the Civil War, there's a whole bunch of unit histories and memoirs that the copyrights have expired that have been uploaded. So if you don't want to spend thousands of dollars searching down rare and antique unit histories, this is a great way to get digital access to all sorts of units from both sides. Additionally, one of the things I really love is that um, there's some search groups on there that people, uh, different libraries and archives have started uploading scans of microfilm from the National Archive, particularly the roles that are about the statements of service for individual Union and Confederate regiments. These are things that they describe what month-to-month uh, -month activities in the units, and a lot of times these are things that professional historians are pulling information for for all sorts of things that give little insights into units that can help add to the big picture. But to get to these before, you had to go to Washington, to the National Archives, which meant that only professional historians or someone living locally to D.C. are doing this. 
now you and I, from the comfort of our home, can pull up these microfilms that otherwise we never would have had access to. Okay, well let me ask you this. You mentioned when we talked about the official record, you mentioned search functions. Talk to me about the functionality of archive.org and how you work around in there. So uh, it also has a, it has a search function, works like most normal web searches. Um, you know, I just start putting in there different search terms. The nice thing is that it casts a very wide net. And I've actually found it's a really great search term. But if I go in there and I want to search for the 24th Michigan Infantry and I put in there, I'll find what I'm looking for very easily. But it'll start throwing in other things and there are things that it knows that are related because they've done a good job of tagging the different books in there. So they know that if I search for the 24th Michigan, hey, let me throw something from the Iron Brigade in there. So it'll show up with the Sauk County Riflemen will oftentimes be attached, which is about a history from the 6th Wisconsin. Fantastic. Well, let's move on. Let's have some real fun. If reading doesn't seem like your thing, a picture's worth a thousand words. Where are we going next? So the Library of Congress, um, they have their uh, picture archive, uh, which has a wide variety of pictures from all across the Civil War, including from some of the most famous photographers like Matthew Brady and Alexander Gardner. And these photos has a very easy search feature you can go through. And not only do they have a wide variety of photos, but they have incredibly detailed scans of them. So much better, they have a TIFF format photos, which allow you to get incredible detail on these photos. And I think what people forget with glass plate photography is that it captures an incredible amount of detail Great. Well, let me pick up with you as a historian. Let me pick up as the expert in photography. The thing to say in these glass plate and tin photographs, when they were made, the glass or the tin is actually the negative. And so if you're looking at a picture that is that large, there's so much more information being captured. I use that site all the time. If you're a Digest viewer, you see photographs regularly. If you watch to the end and catch our credits off, and you'll see the Library of Congress credited because they allow those images to be used for free, which has made your experience as a Digest watcher a lot richer. Do you have any photos you really like out of there? There's a photo I love that is a picture of men from the Sixth Corps in action. And one of the reasons I love it is just from, it's one of the few combat photos of the Civil War, and it shows men... They're hiding behind an embankment. There's some officers that are observing Confederate batteries. And there's just some really interesting little images. Some men are in great coats, some aren't. But I just like that it shows men in the field at ease and it's not so much of a staged photo. And for me, seeing men in the moment is very rare with the way photography was done during the Civil War. Sure, great. Well, let me talk about one example that I picked out to share with you guys. Many of you know the very famous photograph of, uh, of General McClellan and President Lincoln sitting inside a tent about a month after Antietam, right before Lincoln fires McClellan for the final time let's blow in there. We can take a look. Of course, we can see the Confederate flag down in the bottom left. That blanket's called a coverlet. You can see detail in it. If we zoom in on the table that General McClellan and President Lincoln are sitting around, we see as detailed as the hilt of General McClellan's sword and his sword belt sitting on top of the table. For somebody looking to recreate details of Civil War life, let's go into the background. Take a look at the back of the tent. It's a little out of focus because it's beyond what we call the depth of field of the image or where the focus was set. But it's pretty clear if you go back in there that at the back of that tent, somebody has taken two forked sticks and a cross stick and they've essentially made their coat rack out of it. So something you can see, it's not the focus that the photographer wanted us to see, but those of us who are interested in material culture can go beyond and with these large file sizes, get to the back. Well, Andy, thanks for bringing these three great free sources to us. Thank you for spending your time with us at Civil War Digital Digest. We mentioned a lot of web resources here. On the research page on our website, we're going to go ahead and put all these links, and they're going to be available for you to go ahead and access, use the free sources, find a connection to the Civil War, enjoy yourself. We'll see you another time.